Okay, so I had a comment recently on my stunt rally video. It was from David Dosser and it was basically a way of automatically installing various different programs you want. And I have seen this before, but I never really um, did it or compiled one for me. But I figured it would be a good time now with something like Twister Lite, uh, which is an operating system uh, which I absolutely love, but there are definitely some programs that I'd want to install. So anytime I'd install Twister Lite, uh, there are things like PyApps, PyKiss, uh, Gparted, various different things that don't come installed because they've deliberately given you as stripped down a version as possible. Uh, it's the same with Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, I want to install these programs in it to get it up and running. So uh, he's given me four different methods, and uh, one of them was just uh, sudo apt install, uh, dash y uh, which basically says yes to installing uh, and then doing that in sequence but sometimes you find that it stops so he suggested that number two is the better one so two and symbols uh, basically pushes the process on uh, and uh, seems to not ask any questions or anything then there's three which is slightly different in the way that it's sudo apt install dash y and then you put all the names of the programs you want to install uh, and then four uh, this was the interesting one to me because at the end of this, this script is for PyApps and you can see here that it's PyApps. So I played around with it uh, because I wanted PyApps and PyKiss to be part of my installation uh, as well as various different programs. And so I created this bottom bit. So uh, sudo apt install gparted for partition management, uh, Raspberry Pi imager for writing images, NeoFetch for checking your system information and transmission for dealing with torrents, uh, so downloading torrent files. Uh, and after all of these, I put dash y and then and and. And then at the end of that, uh, I experimented with this. If you uh, do PyKiss first, uh, and this is PyKiss, this bit here. So where it starts, curl is PyKiss. PyKiss gets to the end, launches the program, and then the program. Uh, wants you to select an option. So if you install PyApps first, which is what the first bit is, so this bit after transmission, uh, so this bit is the PyApps installation, and then after the and and, we've got the PyKiss. So this will install the whole lot. But I'm in 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, uh, and I, I thought of this because I'm doing something with 64-bit uh, Raspberry Pi OS and 32-bit, uh, and I wanted to do a comparison of the two systems because often when I mention things like Twister or Raspberry Pi OS, I get someone saying, oh, 64-bit's faster. And to be honest, I haven't done a proper comparison, or if I have, I haven't done it for ages. So I thought I'd, I'd write both operating systems, this is for a different video, to USB sticks, and I'm going to do that separately. Anyway, so let's have a look at this script in here. So if I, if I copy this, so all of this text here, and I'll put this in the description so you can do it yourself if you want, but also you can play around with it and you can take out elements if you want as well. So all of that comes up in terminal. If I hit return, you'll see that it starts to install. Uh, it's best before you do this to do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, uh, but I've done that recently. Well, this is a, a brand new installation of 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. So Raspberry Pi imager I see has come up there. NeoFetch has come up there. Transmission has just come up. Now this looks bigger, so I think this is probably PyApps. Although, interestingly, PyApps and PyKiss aren't built for 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, so they may not install, or if they do install, some of the things that they install on your system won't work properly. Um, but with 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, it, it works perfectly with, and also Twister OS. And I haven't really tried it, but um, MX Linux would, should be the same. So I saw PyApps come up. PyKiss is starting to install. It's not come up with any issues yet. So that's finished. But interestingly, uh, on 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, uh, the PyKiss menu comes up. So maybe that's not going to work. Uh, let's have a look. I'm going to do this on Twister OS Lite anyway, but I figured I'd covered the 64-bit just because I, I wanted to do it anyway to have a look and see which bit's installed. So let's close that down. Let's close, oh, let's save this first and close that down and let's go into the menu and have a look at things that have been added. So transmission has been added, uh, Gparted and PyKiss has been added, 
Raspberry Pi Imager has been added, uh, and also Pi Apps. So let's have a look at PyKiss and see if it launches. Oh yeah, it does launch. So maybe certain things will work. I haven't tried this for a while, but I remember trying some things before and they didn't work. So I guess it's gonna be app or game dependent as to whether they work. Uh, so if I was to go into say emulation, and let's try something like P PPSSPP. Do you wanna play yes? So let's come out of that. So it didn't launch PPSSPP, but it, it's only just installed, so it might. <laughs> yeah, it's thinking about it, but it doesn't look like it's gonna launch. And this is because it's designed for, uh, so PyKiss is designed, and the same with PyApps, although there has been talk about, I can't remember if it's PyApps or PyKiss, uh, did mention that maybe they should do a version for 64-bit. And I think this, would be one of the pushes to get towards a 64-bit operating system. Although, again, I'm going to find out in the video as to in a different video as to whether uh, the 64-bit is definitely giving better performance. Um, and I just want to try a few things out, a few tests. So let's see if PyApps launches. Here we go. So if we were to go for something like uh, Commander Pi, which I think I've tried to install before, but didn't get it to install in the 64-bit version via the tools. Commander Pi, install. So it's up on the desktop, so let's have a look. Yes, it's come up. Operation mode 64-bit, Arch 64, and the information. So that, that works anyway uh, on this operating system. That's interesting to know. Anyway, so that's the, the bit of script, which I think is, is an excellent way of doing it. So I've got this saved on a USB stick. I'm gonna boot up in Twister Lite and I'm gonna add in those elements that I wanna to add to Twister Lite uh, and just to show how it works really, but I'm really impressed, it's, it's a great tip and uh, it's just a, a great way of when you install an operating system, because I've done it before where I've cloned an operating system, but once you uh, rewrite that operating system with all your bits in it and things, you still need to update it anyway, so maybe this script is a better way of doing it. Although I do like it when it comes up with all the customization and changes and things like that that I've done. Right, so let's shut down and boot up in Twister Lite. Okay, so I've got Twister OS Lite on this SSD, uh, which I'm plugged into my Pi. Um, I was just gonna show this, because something I've found more recently, uh, occasionally my Pi uh, won't boot up into an operating system uh, or won't turn on the display if I just switch it on, but if I, leave the boot media out and then put it in afterwards, uh, it seems to work. So I'm gonna give this a try and see if I can capture it on video. So you can see my monitor and let's move it down a bit so we can see it a bit easier. Right, so if I switch on my Pi now, let's see what happens. So I haven't got a blue light yet, so it hasn't tried to turn on the monitor. And this is, ah, so the blue lights come on Oh, it's going to work this time. So what's, what often happens, uh, and it's not any particular operating system, it seems to happen quite a lot, is it will start up, but it won't start the monitor. Now I am going through a capture device, but I've always been using that. Um, but it's if it doesn't start up, so a little tip, if your operating system doesn't start up, start it up without an SD card, start it up without any boot media in there at all, uh, and you'll get to that menu system then plug it in or put your SD card in, seems to be fine. So here we are in Twister OS Lite, and I don't think I've installed very much in this at all, uh, because things, when I wanted to do things, I was using the normal version of Twister. Oh, I've installed Raspberry Pi Imager, because I don't think that comes installed, uh, but pretty much nothing else, uh, I haven't added anything else to it. So let's try this script. So go to my USB stick where I've got it, Auto install. This first bit is also something you should do first of all, sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade and it basically just does the whole update without you having to press anything else. So this is the one I wanna copy. Open the terminal, so control alt T, which I forget doesn't work on Twister, so I click on terminal. Uh, it does on Raspberry Pi OS. I love the transparency on Twister. Uh, right, so let's paste that in and hit return. And this will install Gparted, Raspberry Pi Imager, NeoFetch, Transmission, uh, PyKiss and PyApps. 
And as you can see, it's going through and everything looks like it's working fine. There we go. So we're going into PyKiss. So it must have already done PyApps. And this is the same. Maybe something's changed. It, it doesn't go into... When I did it on uh, Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, it went. It launched PyKiss. Uh, I think it did anyway. Right, so let's close that down. So let's try and install uh, the PSP emulator. So let's type in PIK for PyKiss and emulation. So everything should work on here because this is designed for 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS, which Twister is based on. So pretty much everything should work. And I don't want the PSP emulator in this Twister OS light build. I'm just doing it for a test. So if I want to play Silver Edge, just press yes. There you go. So PPSSPP launches in this uh, because it's the 32-bit version of an operating system. So let's close that down. But I can also delete that as well now. So because I don't want that in this operating system, I'll have a separate one for games. Go into emulation. PSP and yes to uninstall. There you go. All done. Now if BotSpot, the creator of PyApps, uh, or Jose, the creator of PyKiss, don't want me to put this in my description, they'd rather you went to their page, I'm happy to delete it from the description. And the way you would get that would be to go, uh, let's do PyApps first. So just go to PyApps and uh, scroll down to the installation bit and you'll be copying and pasting this uh, into the script. So it's literally just that bit is how you install PyApps. And I've got separate videos on that. And also PyKiss, same sort of thing. Just scroll down to find the installation part, which is this. And you copy this and paste it in. But now we're up and running. I've got the things that I want in there. I can't think of anything else. Oh, actually, Commander Pi. Um, but I would install that from PyApps. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.